What's up guys, I'm BTC. We just got some pretty significant info from the devs about what we can expect soon in Overwatch. And for once, it's some good news. Nice little refreshing change of pace there. So what they've said is that they're going to be making a lot of changes short term and long term. And this is going to impact rewards, progression through the battle pass, hero balance, and also they're going to be reworking some characters. So Right away, they said that for rewards and progression, they want to make it feel more like you're achieving something as opposed to just logging in, playing a couple of games, grinding out whatever, you know, kind of missions, quests, whatever you want to call them, the dailies and weeklies and stuff. So you don't feel like it's it's you're just kind of like grinding it out in more of an achievement that's going along with this. So what they're doing short term is in season two, they're changing up the reward system so that each event will have a skin that you can earn just by playing, in addition to other cosmetic rewards that they already offer. And they're going to continue their Twitch Drops program so that you can earn skins and in-game goodies by supporting your favorite creators. And while we're working on the long-term plans, we want upcoming seasons to feel more rewarding than Season 1. By the way, in regard to the whole Twitch Drops thing, I always personally go and find some of the lower viewer streams. Like, I will go and search by viewership lowest to highest and i'll pick someone that's on the very low end where they only have like one or two or three viewers and i'll give them the views because i don't really care to give like extra ad revenue to whoever is you know like with five thousand people so how, how about the little guys is what i'm saying because i mean you can just afk just put the screen on and then just leave it there and you don't really have to worry and you're helping out the little guy so anyways that, that's what you can do to get your, your Twitch drops. So for long term, they said, for Season 3 and beyond, we're looking at a mix of Battle Pass changes, more interesting challenges to pursue, and more exciting play-focused progression systems for you all to dig in. We're all going to talk about some of these changes soon, but the other changes may take more time to lock in. Now, one of the things that I really think that they should do with the challenges here is be very, very careful that they're not setting up a system where people are essentially throwing games in order to get their whatever quest mission thing done, right? Like if you have uh, this person who has to log in and play a character that they're absolutely terrible with and they you know, have to block a certain amount or they have to do this or whatever, that kind of thing is really bad because basically you're setting up your team to fail because this one dude wants to go and get whatever, you know, mission credits for it, right? And I, that's just a terrible idea to do that. Or if they're going to do that sort of thing, they should make it so that it does not work in competitive. Because having your tank player using a character that they have no experience with, and they're just kind of trying to get an achievement, yeah, no, that, that's a bad time for everyone involved. Now, moving back a little bit, as far as that free skin goes just for playing the game, I have a feeling it's probably going to be an epic. Now, it might be decent. In fact, most of the epics that they've been releasing have actually been better than some of the legendaries, but that's another topic. But overall, I think the Battle Pass could use some really significant improvements, and that would be so easy. There are so many different things that they could do to improve the Battle Pass that would be minimal in the amount of cost and effort and time in order to do those things and just make the battle pass significantly better than it currently is. I mean, it's great that they're given out an extra skin for it, fine, but honestly, there are just there are so many things that they could do to improve the battle pass. I do have a video that I've been working on and and hopefully that will be arriving soon where I talk about all the different stuff that they could do to improve the battle pass. Moving on to the next topic of competitive games, Blizzard says that they have a lot of people on their team who play competitive and it's important to them, blah, 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 blah. They've been making some adjustments for the matchmaking system and we've implemented some changes that should help the system more accurately determine a player's skill tier and division. While this change is already in game, you can expect the effects to be more noticeable at the start of season two. The competitive system is more than just matchmaking though. We've heard your feedback about unexpected rank changes, rate of feedback and more. This is a topic we can't do justice with just a few paragraphs, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so they're going to make some changes to competitive, but what you might not have known is there were a lot of problems with competitive that just got resolved and Blizzard kind of snuck it under the rug in the most recent patch. And it was in the, bug no uh, the patch notes for the bugs. What it was is essentially 
a lot of players were being held at low ranks because of an error in the way that the system was working. So you would have these players who would win 10, 20, 30 games, and yet they were still being placed and held in bronze or silver or whatever. And this is a known bug. It's in the patch notes. But for whatever reason, Blizzard just you know, never mentioned it. They never brought it up. They never notified the player base. Hey, yeah, we're aware of this bug that's, you know, basically destroying all of these players ranks and not letting you rank up but they never actually mentioned anything and instead they just kind of snuck it into the patch notes in the bug section so if you were stuck in the lower ranks i mean it's not not for everybody i mean some people are just not good but anyways if you were stuck in the low ranks that might have been a problem and, or just even if you weren't able to rank up in general there was a there was a known bug that was preventing people from ranking up now, there is another really big problem with competitive, and this kind of also goes into the next topic of queue times, which is the fact that the, the matchmaking system is not good at all. So with the queue times, this is what Blizzard had to say. With the move to 5v5, we're seeing longer queue times, although in fairness, I actually haven't seen many long queue times. I've seen queue times that were at most like five minutes. So I don't know, maybe I'm just playing at good times of the day or something. But regardless, they said that they're seeing increased in queue times and they you know, are going to make some changes to it. But here's the problem. Right now, their matchmaker is overly prioritizing making games as fast as possible as opposed to making them fair. And what you're ending up with is you have people that are at a very low rank up in matches against people who are a much higher rank, and it just turns into a complete stomp. Now, this isn't just quick play. It's also happening in competitive as well, and it's just because the matchmaker is broken. Well, it's, it's not broken accidentally. It's broken on purpose because what they have it set as is trying to find the matches as fast as they possibly can, and it doesn't really care if the game is unbalanced because of it. Now. I don't know what they're going to do about that because they haven't said anything about addressing it. And instead, it looks like they're actually going to try to speed it up even more, which might make that problem even worse. But we'll have to see on that one. Moving on to the next topic of hero balance and reworks. So Blizzard said that multiple heroes saw, quote, balance changes and adjustments in the patch, end quote, which essentially means they had some pretty significant nerfs to Genji, Diva, and Zarya, and that's how they want to fix things. See, it's weird because Blizzard, they just don't really understand how to balance the characters, and they never have. And what they're doing, specifically like with the tanks, you have some characters that were good and some that were bad, but rather than making the bad characters good, they decided to make the good characters bad. So now... Everybody is equally bad, and that's not a fun experience because nobody wants to play a character that is garbage. So, anyways, what they said is that they've changed these and, you know, they're going to be making some more changes in the next patch, which is the start of Season 2, which should be, I think it's December 5th or 6th, somewhere around there. Anyways, and then they're also going to be uh, making some changes to Sojourn as well. Specifically, they mentioned. Now, also, they talked about reworks. And they said that a lot of the ways that they're going to try to deal with queue times and some other issues is the reworks of support characters. And Blizzard said, many of the ideas we have are focused on the support role and how we can make it more fun and more rewarding to play. We've discussed targeted support hero reworks, game system updates, and even some role-wide changes to improve support quality of life. Now, they did just make a big change to the DPS passive, so it stands to reason that they could do the same for the support role as well, because with the DPS, now, after you get an elimination, you have both a boost to, I think it's your movement speed and your reload speed at the same time, so they could possibly make it so that when you do X thing for whatever on a, a support character, then you get a boost to your healing or whatever, right? So, or you, maybe you get healing even, you know, if you're taking damage, because right now you currently get healed, but only after you've not taken damage for a certain amount of time. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things that they could do. 
But I think that one of the big problems with the support role is that you don't have a whole lot of control over what happens in the game. And you're overly heavily reliant on your teammates to do stuff. Like you could be the best healer in the world. And if your DPS just can't do damage, then you're going to lose, right? Like it doesn't matter how good you are. You can't really carry as a support. Yes, I know there are some isolated situations where you could possibly do it. But for the most part, overwhelming majority of the time, you just can't really carry as a support. You need your teammates to do the best that they can. And if they're just not doing their job, if your tank is just constantly feeding and if your DPS are getting outmatched in their 1v1s or whatever, then you're just not going to win. So I think one of the the things that they really need to focus on for the support is make it so that what you're doing is simply more impactful. I mean, a character like Mercy, for example, that it almost feels outside of the, you know, the resurrection ability. It doesn't feel like you're really having a whole lot of impact on anything because all you're doing is you just left click on a teammate and you're just watching the health bar slowly move up. I mean, yeah, you have to switch it over to damage every now and again, but it doesn't feel very impactful. And kind of the same thing with a bunch of the other support characters as well. It, it just, it doesn't feel like you're actually doing anything that is going to help win the match. And yes, obviously the healing does help to win the match, but like I said, there, there's just only so much you can do. And, and I think they changed a lot of that when they went to the 5v5 instead of 6v6 for the tanks, because now the tanks play a much bigger role than they did before there's a lot more emphasis and you actually do have you know more kind of impact on stuff because you're basically a, a a fat dps at this point for most of the tanks so yeah you can do that but with the support it still feels like you're just kind of waiting around for the rest of your team to do stuff and that doesn't it doesn't feel like a very good way to play the game it's not really rewarding so anyways that is what they're going to be doing. They are going to make a bunch of changes, give out some more free stuff, which is nice. Can't really complain on that one. And they're also going to try to address some stuff. Now, I do think some of the queue time stuff might not be the best, but overall, it looks like uh, there are going to be some good things, good things uh, moving this way for uh, Overwatch 2, at least in terms of gameplay. The store and the battle pass are still... Still another issue. But anyways, so there you go, guys. What do you think that they're going to make changes for the support? Do you think it's going to be a new passive? Do you think it's going to be character-specific buffs? And if it is a new passive, what would you like to see it be? Let me know down below. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. Everything I do, so instinctive.